This is the first video for section 1.7 on coloring graphs. In this lecture, we'll be talking about maps and colors. So here's a map of the United States. And what we want to try to do is think about how can we color the states. So each state is going to be shaded in with a color so that any two states that share a border are given different colors. That's the normal way that maps are colored. So here's a way to do it. And in this case, we can see that whenever we have two states that share a border, those two states are given different colors. And even though there are 50 states, we don't need 50 colors. In this case, we're using six colors, orange, red, yellow, blue, purple, and green. And it's a proper coloring because that's what we mean when we say that adjacent states are given different colors. So the question now is, is it possible to use fewer colors? So what we want to think about is the number of colors that we need to color in a map. So let's zoom in on a portion of the map to try to think about the kinds of issues that come up. So we've got Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey here. We know that New York and Pennsylvania share a border. And because they share that border, so here's the border between New York and Pennsylvania, because they share that border, we know that those two states have to be different colors. So in this case, I've shaded New York in red and Pennsylvania in blue. But at this stage of the coloring, any two different colors would have worked. And now both of those states border New Jersey, so New Jersey can't be blue because it shares a border with Pennsylvania, and it can't be red because it shares a border with New York. So we'd need some third color for New Jersey. Let's look at a different part of our map. So here we have some states on the western part of the United States. Now we might notice that California and Nevada share a border. So right here, the border between Nevada and California. And so that means that Nevada and California have to be different colors. So in this case, I've shaded Nevada blue and California green. So now let's look at some of the other states in this region. Oregon shares a border with California, so it can't be green. Nevada shares a border with Oregon, so Oregon also can't be blue. So Oregon has to be some third color, let's say red. So we can shade Oregon in red. Now Arizona, if we look at a different part of this region, shares a border with Nevada, so Arizona can't be blue. Arizona shares a border with California, so Arizona also can't be green. But Arizona, so, so Arizona can't be blue or green. But again, the point is we're trying to limit the number of colors that we need. So we could use a fourth color for Arizona, but if we're trying to use the fewest number of colors possible, we want to reuse the color red again over here for Arizona because we're allowed to. Arizona doesn't share a border with Oregon, so we don't have to use a different color. We can use the same color for Oregon and Arizona. Now let's look at Idaho and Utah. So Idaho borders Oregon and Nevada. So Oregon shares a border with Idaho. Nevada shares a border with Idaho. So Idaho can't be red. It can't be blue. It could be green because Idaho doesn't share a border with California. So we might think, oh, okay, I can use a green for Idaho here. But Utah shares a border with Nevada, so Utah can't be blue. Utah shares a border with Arizona, so Utah can't be red. But Utah also shares a border with Idaho, so Utah can't be green. So we've used up all of the colors that we've thought about already. We've used up red, blue, and green. So we'd need some fourth color for Utah, maybe orange. So these are the kinds of things that happen when we're starting to think about maps, even though we're trying to limit the number of colors we're using, sometimes we're forced to use a new color. So it turns out that in any physical map, four colors are enough to color the entire map properly. And remember, this word properly here is representing the idea that if two regions or countries or counties or whatever the map is that we're trying to color, if two regions share a border, they must have different colors. That's what that word properly means. So any possible map, four colors are going to be enough. And that was actually proved in the 1970s with the help of some computers. Now, finding a proper coloring that uses the minimum number of colors, that can be a very difficult problem. So one, one thing we're going to do is we're going to model the coloring problem using graphs. So we've been talking about graphs for quite a while now. So the graph is going to have vertices that represent each region, in this case state, because we're talking about the map of the United States. But again, it could be countries, it could be counties, it could be whatever the map is representing. And then two vertices are connected by an edge if those states share a border. And so we start with our original map of the region. We think about a graph where every vertex represents a state, and we connect two vertices if those corresponding states share a border. 
and then we just end up with this graph. And the graph is going to be a lot easier to work with. So when we color the graph, what we want to do is color in the vertices of the graph so that if any two vertices are connected by an edge, they are given different colors. So for example, Maine up here, we might color blue, but then New Hampshire, because it shares a border with Maine, that would have to be a different color, let's say maybe orange. And so we would go through our graph and try to color in the vertices so that if any two vertices are connected by an edge, those vertices are colored in different colors. And then the goal eventually is to find a way to do this with the fewest possible colors. So as we've done before, we're going to find an algorithm to solve this problem. So this is going to be called a greedy algorithm. And like our other algorithms, it's not guaranteed to find the best possible answer. It does follow a simple common sense principle, and it does find an answer quickly, even though that answer might not be the best answer. So that's what we'll be talking about in this section.